clock tower of Seacombe Ferry Terminus dominates the surrounding landscape that has evolved since the building was constructed in the 1930s. What was once the site of a railway station has become a small residential estate and not far away stood the Seacombe Hotel which by the late 1970s had been replaced by a smaller pub the site of which today is a vacant plot of land overlooking the river. During the First World War, the Wallasey ferry boats Daffodil and Iris were requisitioned by the Royal Navy for a raid on the Belgian port of Zee Bruges in 1918. A year later, on the vessel's return to ferry duties, they were both given the prefix Royal in 1919. Alongside the ferry terminal a section of the car park is built on reclaimed land that once used to be the site of a three lane floating roadway that gave traffic access to and from the luggage boats. The goods service closed when the pear trough was withdrawn in 1947. Passengers on the upper deck of a ferry boat take in the river views of the 1890s. In those days steamers like the Thistle would have been seen sailing between the Whirl and Liverpool. She was withdrawn in 1910 and in the same year the newly built John Joyce came into service for the Wallasey ferries. People watch from the Seacombe stage as the Graf Zeppelin passes over Liverpool in July 1932. This was the airship's second 24-hour round Britain flight that year and on board would have been a crew of 36 and up to 20 passengers. Royal Iris in the 1960s hosted many of the acts from the Merseybeat scene, including the Beatles, who performed on the vessel during a river cruise. She was known to many as the fish and chip boat. Sadly, the vessel now lies in a derelict state on the banks of the Thames at Woolwich. Many years during the summertime, Royal Daffodil and Royal Iris would have been busy taking visitors to New Brighton and then in the week ferrying commuters to and from their workplaces in Liverpool. 
as did the Wallasey, which became the last steam-powered ferry boat on the river. She was sold in 1964. The promenade is popular with walkers and cyclists and in front of the pub a small car park provides drivers with a place to sit and take in the river views from this small promontory on the river wall. And over the years the small headlands layout has changed. Today nothing remains of the ferry terminal that once stood opposite the pub and the location of the ferry pier demolished in 1947, has been replaced by a large stone groin constructed to halt the serious erosion of sand between here and New Brighton. A winter storm and children play dodging the waves. Then during the summer the waterfront became a place where local residents could spend time watching the river traffic. And overlooking the ferry at this point was the Egremont Institute, seen here on the right of this view. During the school holidays at the turn of the 1900s, children and their friends often came down to the beach to build sandcastles or paddle in the rock pools. It was an era when the pace of life was a lot slower. The steamer John Joyce leaves Egremont. The vessel was in service with Wallasey Ferries for 26 years. The stage seen here at Egremont was left stranded after the pier was badly damaged by a passing vessel in 1932. A similar incident took place again in 1941, but after this mishap the ferry closed. Egremont Institute on its southern side at one time had a number of large advertisement hoardings which faced out across the river from behind the pub and around the corner in Tobin Street were tea rooms and a selection of shops that served the needs of passers-by. By the 1930s the number of passengers using the ferry had been in decline for some time as people were now using the shorter Seacombe to Liverpool crossing but during the summer children still came to play on the beach or have a ride on a donkey at Egremont.